Rocks of brown, the sky's blue, down in Lamaru, my Lamaru. Darwin is the Australian port closest to Asia, and it has a dry season lasting from May to September. Two reasons why Lamaru Beach has a transient population. Met up with a friend and we decided to go to India. And we hitched up from Melbourne and were to stay just a couple of days waiting for a plane to go to Indonesia and then on to India. And it was so exciting here. Really? And there's people are here because of the, the beauty of it, aren't they? And the friendship and the, the camaraderie. You know, they, at night they, they have their meal and they sing and... And between Doctors Gully and Lamaru Beach are all these amazing rocks, these coloured rocks, purple ones, yellow ones, red ones. And so we stayed down that way. They rely on trees for shelter, which is why they appear only during the long drive. Fascinated, you know, from my architectural point of view, I was, I've always been interested in trying to find out what people really want and if they have to build it themselves, just how they tackle it. And I was also interested in their space requirements because this is a, um, a fairly tight area and these people were transient and so the materials were materials they could scrounge and but they more or less all sort of uh, agreed um, to a common size and that was that they seemed to be about eight feet square about 2.4 meters square which was made up by um, by having a bed on one side and then the head of the bed was all your gear your, your pack your, your rucksack and all your other possessions and then there was enough room on the side of the bed to um, maybe have a chair if you could find one, or a box, or a table, or another place for somebody. And in the first house I built was in a tree just like this one. It was out over the rocks, and I put a hammock in it, just a big fishing net, and I slept on that. Yeah, a big fishing net. Yeah, yeah, pulled tight between the branches, and Whoa, the high tide would come in I underneath. See a big bird there. You see a big bird. That was what was beautiful about living down here, is she? We saw lots of big birds flying by, see, like that big one down there, and fish jumping out of the water. Oh. We saw sharks sometimes. We saw big manta rays. The uses of, of the trees. The guys was much more um, elaborate. He actually built platforms on, on the various levels. So there was a bedroom level and an entertainment level, and the kitchen was down in the roots of the tree. My house was, there was a tree down there that grew flat with a couple of branches. I live there. But there was houses everywhere in the trees in here, on the ground and in the trees. Yes, we tried to use, to recycle everything, even in those days. The Darwin Beach is recognised as a rest point for hitchhiking hippies coming in or going out of Australia, but mainly out, particularly through Timor as a cheap way into Asia. Crowded city, bright lights, you'll soon see me vanish out of sight That midnight bus is taking me Back to Lamaru, my Lamaru So I didn't know it was here when I came and up in that rainforest along the side of that cliff there were all kinds of little dwellings uh, and in 73 I built one that uh, was a wooden platform that jutted out from a fairly steep part of that, that hill behind us yeah. And I saw the difference in, like, in that particular society, you know, they're all basically young people, but by that stage they had developed fairly prominent traits, even though they were probably all bound by travel and, and the green smoke stuff. You know. For us, with four walls, we don't have four walls, man, we just wanted a tree above our heads. And we used to tell them about the beach. They used to come down and sleep on the beach and live on the beach for a day, sometimes a week, sometimes three months. We had, for instance, Allen Ginsberg, who was from the USA. He read some of his poetry. We got stoned. Hey, this place, and it had a special magic to it. You just arrived here, and then all your worries from living in big cities fell away and you met people from all over the world but there wasn't a lot of housing there was a fair bit of work 
Some of us would be working in town. I got a job mowing lawns. And after work, we'd all come back down here and we'd share our food. We'd the old lentil stew was rather a popular meal because it could spread to feed a lot of people. So you just threw in some rice and some lentils and threw in some onions and cooked it all up and shared it with whoever was around until it was gone. Last night was a beautiful sunset, really beautiful. The, in the water was reflected, the pink, you know, was reflected because the tide was out. So we pitched a little blue tent right here, little blue plastic two-man tent. And the first night, the sound of the hermit crabs kept us awake all night, crawling all over the plastic. The bats falling out of the trees, drunk from a honey in the flower. And there was a lot of questioning about land ownership, and I think the hippies at that time reflected some of that questioning about who belongs to this place or you know why can't people just stay in a place because yeah. the aboriginal men and women would come down and they've been coming here for a long time and they would be fishing and they'd get stingrays here <laughs> but when i got together with these people everyone had different ideas mm. and we explored all these ideas and Sure enough, you know, it was different. It was more, there's a lot more to life than what you normally just uh, learn from your mum and dad or your religion. I want to climb. You want to climb? <laughs> well, that's what it's about. That's the best thing that we got about living here. Because we all came from the cities and the suburbs. Well, that was a whole introduction to nature and to living outside. And we really loved that. In fact, I loved it so much. I haven't changed. <laughs> I've always got to live in something that I've built. And I stayed in Darwin. I wasn't for about four years that I eventually got to India, but I'm still in Darwin, having tried to leave a few times. But I think that the spirit of Darwin first started on that first day on the beach right here, and it's still here now. Mm -hmm.